All right. Good morning. Uh, we're going to get started. We'll uh, probably a few more stragglers will uh, come in. Uh, so as you guys don't know me, I'm Paul Kropsik uh, with Digital Watchdog. Um, I'm director of education uh, with uh, with DW. Uh, I would also like to point to the fact the slide has my email address on it. So if you guys have any questions afterwards, Paul K at digital-watchdog.com. Shoot me an email. Uh, I will answer them as best I can. Uh, we will have a Q&A at the end. So if you have any questions on C3 CMS, questions about what I presented, maybe something wasn't quite clear, or I tend to go a little fast, although I'm working on it, I'm trying to slow down my, my delivery. Uh, by all means, uh, ask, ask a question. Uh, and fortunately for you guys, I don't have to ask me any questions about any sort of uh, investment things, whatever, don't take it if I do give it to you. And we will get started, all right? So we're gonna talk about the C3 uh, CMS, our software for our different products. Come on, uh, go to webinar, let's get going, there we go. So uh, the C3 CMS software supports our VMAX A1, A1 Plus, and IP Plus, okay? So it supports our embedded recording solution. All right, so the IP Plus has PoE uh, ports in it for the IP cameras, A1 plus up to five megapixel recording over coax, and the A1, which is the uh, earlier version of the A1 plus, which supported up to two megapixel uh, analog cameras. And you will see a new release in the near future that has much higher resolution in the, in the A1 series. So some of the features of the C3 CMS are centralized monitoring, uh, easy to use interface. Uh, we do have an end-to-end -end solution. Uh, we have free updates for the software. Uh, and one of the features I really like, which is the live and record video simultaneously, uh, just a ton of features built into this. We're not gonna go into every one of them. We're gonna go into more setup uh, ideas and things like that, how the software works. Uh, but there are just a ton of features in here for the, the end user to go in and pull video, find video, uh, and discover uh, the information they need. So uh, there's a bunch of main features with it, remote connection to our products. You can do up to 288 cameras live across two monitors. There's a live snapshot function, which I'll show you, uh, remote PTZ control, and of course we have the C3 uh, event server. So we're gonna go and talk about all those different aspects of it. So there are two pieces of the software, really. There is a piece that is your live view playback one, and then there's a, an, event, an event server piece of software along with it. So um, again, some of the main features are live and playback on the same screen. So you can have one camera playing back, you're searching for something while the rest of the camera is live, or have a whole monitor dedicated to live video while you're searching, okay? So there's a bunch of different functionality uh, in this as far as, as far as that goes. We also have our event server. You can get events and health from VMAX, VMAX A1s, A1 Plus, IP Plus, but also you can get them from Spectrum, okay? So you gotta use the event rules engine in Spectrum, which you guys have been on a few of our webinars. We've talked about basically what it is that forces Spectrum to send events to the event viewer, okay? So it works a little differently. It's not 100% automatic that allow you to take all your sites and put them into the event viewer. And I'm gonna show you the pluses of that uh, very shortly. So first off, we gotta talk about installing uh, the software. So you go install the software, got a, little, a few prerequisites, you guys can see these for yourself. Windows 10 PC, not that it won't run on a Windows 7 box. Uh, I don't know anyone who has a Windows 8 thing anymore, but anyway, Windows 7 was a very popular OS. Uh, it's just that, Microsoft is not really updating it for security purposes anymore, so everyone's kind of getting out of it. So Windows 10, uh, optimal 60 to 32 gig of RAM. I will say this, the software will work fine on a PC running eight gig of RAM, but the Windows 10 OS needs more RAM, so they tend to fight uh, with each other because you're at sort of the minimum for the OS. Uh, <clears throat> Intel i5 or better, again, it'll run on an i3. Okay, especially with paired with a video card, which we'll talk about in a second. A uh, couple hundred mega free space on the C drive or wherever you install your software. Sometimes 
you don't put your software installed on C, maybe it's going onto partition D or whatever, but wherever you're installing your software, pointing your software to install, uh, need a couple hundred meg free on it. I always tell people administrative access to install anything, okay? So make sure you can uh, use the administrative functions and go in and do that, and I can show you one way of doing it. It's very easy. Uh, and for better performance, a dedicated video card. Uh, I'd recommend NVIDIA, okay? So you can get a video card that's, you know, um, you know, they're still a little, you know, I think a little overpriced from where they were a few years ago. You can get a decent card for like seventy dollars. Put it in a machine, or if you get a, you know, a laptop computer. Or I, I've gone all laptops. I don't have a desktop computer anymore. Uh, you can buy one now at a reasonable cost that has an NVIDIA, you know, high performance video card in it. So you can find those around from HP, from Dell, from the usual uh, manufacturer. So these are the prerequisites. Again. 8 gig of RAM it'll work, and we're actually going to talk about the setup tweaks you can make so it performs better on slower machines. So, first thing you're going to do is you're going to go down to our website and download the software. Okay? So, you go under the recorder you have, or really any of our A1 or IP Plus recorders, you download the software, you're going to right mouse button click and run as administrator. Okay? Nine times out of 10, it'll just let you do it. A little screen is gonna pop up and say, you know, this machine, this program is gonna modify the machine. You say, okay, and you go on from there, okay? So run as administrator and then it's gonna take you through it. This is a little hard to see. We'll see a little bigger uh, shot of this, but it says, do you wanna install the main CMS software? It's kind of pre-checked. And then do you wanna install the event viewer? Not every installation are you gonna install the event viewer, okay? So just keep that in mind. If you're doing the installation for the customer, you're telling the customer how to install it, they can leave that unchecked if they're not gonna install the event server software, okay? So this is where you find it. You actually do a right mouse button click on the uh, uh, software executable and you go run as administrator, pop up, you say yes, you go in and it'll, and it'll run the install for you. It installs four different softwares it installs c3 backup which we're going to talk about the c3 cms which is the live view playback software with all the features the event viewer and then the c3 player so that player is identical to the playback software in the c3 cms but designed to, to stand alone okay each of these do have unique functionality and so it's one of the things you want to talk about so when you're all done with the install, and you know this could be with any software, not just us, we have a little question mark up there, and I'm actually gonna close the uh, layout so it'll download faster, because this slide takes about a minute or so to run. So click this and it says, it sees, it says update. It'll check and make sure if there's an update available. Click update. It'll start downloading it. And again, this was, I got a pretty fast internet connection, but this was done pretty much in real time. So you can see it actually downloads the update files and then it'll run it. This was a, a, a service update, so there was no um, features added between those two. It was just like, you know, screens didn't look right or there was writing wrong or something like that. And now we're gonna run the install and you see over here it says yes, say yes, the event server install. You can uncheck that and not have it install the event server if you don't want to. So sometimes this will pop up and it's Microsoft Visual Basic plus plus repair just in case there's old files in there. This will run and put the new files, the latest uh, things, and then you can say yes or no, restart the computer, I would always say no, finish up whatever you're doing, then reboot the computer, then run the test for the customer, but you could have it reboot and, and um, you know, do its thing. So the next spot we go to is adding sites, okay? So when we're over here, you right mouse button click, you add site. If a system is found, it will automatically appear in this window here on the network. You can click refresh once, it'll do a hunt again. And you actually then you just go in and click on it, put in the information, and it'll force it 
into the added to the site. If it's off-site, okay, meaning it's not found on that network or it's on a the company's network, but on a different IP scheme through a router or a VPN, whatever, you can then go in and choose the series, okay? So if you have a VMAX A1 Plus or A1 Plus and some other letters or numbers, uh, you can go in and it'll find it this way, or the VMAX series, which is the legacy series, which is the VMAX A1. And you can click on that, uh, have your web port ready, IP address, and DDNS and or DDNS name. Okay, so it doesn't have to be an IP address. Uh, if you have the uh, thing, then you need, of course, the web port, and then you need the proper username and password. It may not be admin, could be something else in there, and then you'd click verify. So we're just going to go forward. We're going to put in our information. There we go. I'm going to put it in by IP address. So I got 100.32.147.38. If we have a custom port, we're going to use demo. It's actually, I think demo demo or demo password. It's one of our demo sites. And then it'll say this is up to 16 cameras. It'll give the MAC address, all the information. You click OK, and then it adds it here. Okay. Now you can add a new site, edit the site, or edit the site name. So in this case, I'm just saying DWIP plus. And then I can go over to my sites and just drag it over and view my live video, playback, whatever I whatever I need to do. Um, on this particular part of the system, okay? So, drag and drop playback, just give you a demonstration. You can drag over a camera. Uh, I can, for it, it will automatically display the last 24 hours, but I can force over and have it display everything that's in the timeline, okay? So everything that was recorded. So I can have someone walking out of the building, I can drag the timeline back, go somewhere else, Go to nighttime, go to somewhere else that day, find some events. Someone said something happened around one o'clock or nine o'clock at night or whatever. I can just drive through the timeline, you know, see someone in the building, you know, take a look at them, see who that is. So you can just drag and drop and just run through uh, the timeline very easy. And then if you ever want to go back to live, there's a live button over here. And there's also the snapshot button. So there's also an, uh, a, a very powerful feature in here. That's the stitching feature. So this is a view of four cameras stitched together. This one happens to be stitched together vertically. And they're running around our warehouse in Cerritos. Giving you a feeling that this is like a panoramic camera. And it's really not. It is just a couple of cameras, you know, laid out that are in a, position where if someone, in that case, the forklift or someone drove through, you could keep an eye on them and the software will, the software will allow you to stitch them together. So if we go over here, I'm going to choose a few cameras. So that's me uh, trying to get my just right. There. there we go. So I'm taking three cameras. I'm also going to make an adjustment, as you can see, to the stream type. I'm going to force the main stream or the high-res stream on that camera. Now it goes to 1920 by 1080. And I said, you know what? I'm going to make sure it's forced on all of them. I'm just going to highlight them one more time because I unclicked by accident. And then I'm going to stitch them all together. So it creates another view that has all those cameras stitched together. So if someone walked from the side of the soda machine, down this aisle, up this aisle would follow them through the view of the building. And that's me zooming in and out with the, uh, with the mouse. And then I can just drag over some other cameras. So here's two more cameras. I'm gonna do a panoramic view. 
and now they're tied together. One's our LPR camera and one's an overview, so I can see the car coming in, I can see the plate, and then I can go in and also get the color of the car and the type of car. So we also have this little masking program where if I grab a picture of someone, let's say they're not supposed to be part of it or there's license plate or there's some proprietary information, I can take a still, mask, mask out the person or the object or whatever, save it if I have to, you know, send it somewhere to someone else and there's some information I don't want to, you know, forward. There's a way of doing it and still be able to send the information out. So there's just like tons of features in there. There's also fast backup. Now, what I mean by that is I can choose a start time, an end time, and all, by the way, this is all while live view is going on. I can choose my channel or channels. Okay, so I can choose more channels. I can tweak the time, make sure I got the five or five minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, whatever I have. And then it will just start backing up the data. And by the way, I could have opened another window, viewed some more cameras, and started another backup. By the way. Backup complete, and then I can go view that backup in, the, in this path there at the top there. And I can choose to save it to another location from that button. Okay. So this is the other backup. Now I'm going to pause this a second because this is a different backup. This backup is a remote backup for the system or systems themselves. So you can create backup specific cameras that can dump to a box somewhere that has a NAS, a, a lot of storage in it and stuff like that, or whole systems and do remote backups on a schedule. Okay, so it'll go every night at 6 p.m. It'll start backing up from the day before. Okay, so that's what this is for. If it's specific time backup you need, you use the backup that's in C3 CMS. This is for a scheduled backup, an emergency backup. You know, you don't want to lose the, the data. You might have, you know, only two weeks of storage in the recorder, but this could give you, if you have storage sitting on the network or sitting somewhere else, uh, you could get, you know, however much, you know, however many terabytes you have, you could get one month, two months, three months, six months, two months, you know, five months, two years backed up from the system, but may only have two weeks local in the local machine. You can password protect it. So anyway, let me, let me just keep going on this. So we're going to go over here, 232 file counts, about 100 gig from there, 302 gig on the fifth. And I'm just going through and I can say, okay, max channels one through 16. I can select device and I can select multiple devices on this backup. Okay. And you can choose each one. All right. Choose each system. Choose when you want to start the backup, when to end the backup. So again, this is great for someone who just wants to make sure the video is stored. Okay. So it says download the file, which is like complete the complete data file. If you want to go back and just do five minutes to use the other one, this will tell you when it starts, when it stops. And then of course you can start scheduled backup when the OS starts. So this doesn't have to be on the same PC as C3 CMS is running. Could be, this could be running on a different, a different PC. You could look at the server backup, how often that backup ran. If it ran for whatever reason it didn't run, you could have, Create a list, and then if you have password protected files, you can go in and uh, view the password protected files. Uh, so Stanley, I, that's a good question. I will answer that one for you as a yes, and I'll explain it to everyone when they're when we're at the Q and A section. But the answer is yes. So there's a quick tech tip. Sometimes if you have a lot of cameras on the screen. You're going to see these numbers and the font kind of run together. Okay. Now, some of this information is, I think, spurious. You don't need it on there. And so, what you can do is on a specific layout, you can go in and just take off, you know, you're not, not concerned whether it says live or playback and resolution on here. And now everything fits better. You still got the camera name on it and the date and time, which is pretty much all you need. 
channel name, date, and time. But there's another way to do this where you can do it globally. So if you're one of these sites where you got 30, 40 cameras on the screen, you know, or in this case, eight or 10, there's a way to do it so you can clean up uh, that view. I'm gonna show you that in a, a, a little bit. So this is now the configuration tab in the uh, C3 software. So I'm just gonna jump out here real quick, okay? And you see we've got our site up here. We can add a widget like a clock, CPU memory. But here's configuration. So that's what configures the system. I thought this was too small to show you live, so I'm gonna just go back to the PowerPoint and sort of have this blown up version. So this is where you can go in and say, what type of system do I have? If I have an i3 system, okay, I would go to basic display. I'd leave that unchecked, okay? If you have a system, you know, so again, could be a desktop, could be a laptop, that's an i7 and has an NVIDIA chip in it, I, by all means, would say high quality display because what happens is, is uh, the software, some of the work will be offloaded to the video card to what's called the GPU. Okay, and thus it'll run better, run faster, uh, the animations will work better, you know, just where everything will work a little clicker and a little smoother for the end user. So it just depends on the system. Basic system, it's not gonna offload it, it's, but it's also not gonna try to tax the, 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 the CPU so the animations look a little, a little slower, a little different, a little less uh, system smoothness and animations, just to be, you know, just for that. So. Uh, some of the auto functions, auto login, auto close, save last layout. Let's say they're always opening the same layout. You check that, it'll always just pop up with the same last layout. You have your tools section back here. So you have a backup player. So files you've backed up. Okay, and we're going to, so I showed you that one video. I backed up like 10 minutes worth of video. I can go in and play it back on that. But I also have backup player export, which brings up a backup player and then exports uh, the video to an MP4 AVI format. And then the masking tool I actually already showed you, bring it up, can mask out someone's face, license plate, whatever. So these are some basic settings. You can set the default language. You can put it in French. You can put it in Spanish. You know, uh, I think there's eight or nine languages uh, in that in that section. But there's, a, so this is where, this is part of the section where you go in and say, okay, you know, what system am I using? Free sizing display, uh, I find, leave that unchecked even if you have a good video card stuff like that uh it's a little too free and people start really just making their call in for tech support because they've you know made the made the display a weird shape and they can't figure out where they are so <clears throat> next is general so this is where you set your path for what's going on so let's say you're doing the capture function in there where you're capturing a uh a jpeg or a short video clip from it. You can put a path, that could be a C drive, could be a D drive, could be an F drive, could be a NAS somewhere else on the network. You have your streaming backup path. There's actually a way to, to uh, back up uh, your, your stream data from this. There is a scheduled backup path. So this is where maybe you send that to a NAS for your scheduled backup. And then of course your file backup path where you're just backing up a short amount of video and files. Now here's your display text, okay? So again, I can go in here and say, don't care about if people know if it's live or playback, don't need the resolution on there, need the channel title, need the date and time, I don't even need the site name. So you could take all that stuff off, okay? Or you could put some on if you think it's relevant, okay? I mean, you know, I, I think date, time, channel title uh, is enough, personally, okay? but. You guys may differ, but this is where you go in and tweak it depending on the machine. What you're, some people are only looking at a quad and they like having all that stuff on the display, that's fine. But if you got, like I said, 35 cameras up, 60 cameras up, you want to clean it up so this way you're just looking at the video. So on network, uh, we've got a spot for save live storage. Again, you set the path for that, okay? So it actually will save the live video uh, on, on the system when you hit the little, um, uh, there's a little icon I'll show you in a little bit that shows, uh, looks like a movie frame. That's where that goes. And then, of course, how you want it saved. You just want one frame a second, or do you want full frame, meaning all the frames? This depends on the speed of the machine. I'd say to you, use iframe for most of it because this is not stuff, you know, this is more for, hey, I want to just take a look at some of this video. 
and one frame a second is fine for just a quick review, but you can set it for full frame, whatever's coming in, uh, it'll, it'll respond to it. And so that would be using this function. So we'll go back in here, we'll close this, bring over a camera, and you know, so you got your playback functions down here, but also buried in here are these, see? So if I hit this, it's gonna go to that spot that's on my path, okay? If I hit this, it's gonna save to a spot on my path and so on. So that's where those live stream, live capture items are at. So then we go to display. So now this tweaks the display for the user. Now, there's actually is default screen aspect ratio. For some reason, if you're using an old 17 inch HP monitor or something like that, maybe set it for four by three. Default stream type, meaning it's gonna try to force the high res stream or the second stream to the display. And then there's another one called auto. I'd leave it on auto. And then you can just tweak the spacing. Do I need an, a lot of spacing between each camera or should I have them all squished together to save space? You know, on the bottom, on the right, and you can do this down to the pixel, if you notice. Font size, uh, for me, small is okay. Some people might want it a little bigger on the display. Date, time, format, and then there's a way to sequence between layouts, and you can set your sequence interval here. So maybe every 20 seconds, you can have the software sequence between a layout of, let's say, a bunch of quad cameras. So if I had multiple layouts on the screen here, so if I have this one as one layout, and then this one has another layout. I can hit this and it will actually sequence between the two every five seconds. So it'll go back, bring it up. Obviously, it takes about five seconds for it to pull in the video. So go back and forth between the two. But that's what that, that's what that function does. So then we go to status. So status is how often is it gonna check the status of the unit it's connected to? You could set it for every minute, every 10 minutes, every 20 minutes, every half hour, depending on how much you're, you're doing it. So it'll check status, and then if a camera's down, it'll say video loss, whatever, or you can have it not show the video loss display, just show a blank screen, okay? May not want people to know a camera's out at a site. Then we've got the event function built into C3. So you can have an event pop up, for, and I, I can't even fit them all on the screen, but any event over here, so I could have motion detection as a pop up, sensor on, and if we're using the IP plus and our MVT, MBT, or MVT cameras, MTT cameras, they have video analytics built in. So if there's line detection, so someone crosses a line, you could have a pop up in the C3 software, you can give it a color. Okay, uh, and you can enable it. Of course, you know what port it comes in on. Uh, on the A1 Plus and the IP Plus, it's automatic. You don't have to worry about uh, that port designation. Just leave it at 8033 and it'll work. And then finally, uh, user accounts. So you're not always going to give the end user full access to the functionality of this software. So this is the user account for this software, not for each site, okay? So, got this guy user here, Paul, put in a pretty long password. He cannot add sites, he cannot change the configuration, and he cannot back up and read the log. He can export video, he can use a PTZ, he can create and use favorites, he can play back and he can do live, but he can't do these other ones, and then we add them in, and uh, away you go. And I think Paul is still over here, where's my, Where's my users? So under user accounts, see we got Paul, and I can even add, of course, a description for him down here. Like I said, I thought that that screen was a little too small, so we went to this sort of blown up thing in a PowerPoint. So, Apple computers, Mac computers, whatever you want to call them. Uh, the software works identically on them. You can download it from our website. Every function I've showed you up to now works perfectly in it. Live view playback, backing up, 
you know, tweaking for displays, you know, displaying 144 cameras on a monitor. So you've got the same thing, saving videos the same. Uh, of course, there are some things about paths and stuff like that that are different on a Mac than they're on a, on a, are on a PC. So keep that in mind when you're setting a path and you're writing data to it. But the software works the same. Live view, playback, multiple live view. It looks the same, the fast forward, setting a backup, ending a backup. You know, it all works identically. So this way, the user experience, whether you have a, a PC or a Mac, you can show someone how to use it. And away you go. See here, so I changed that one. I want it to go to my thumb drive that's plugged into the Mac and start backup. And it will just make a backup to that thumb drive. So again, just, just so you know, if you learn it on a PC, once you get the hang of opening a program on a Mac, you're, this thing will work fine. So the reason why we have the uh, uh, Mac software and we try to match it 100% to the PC software is the fact we, we find that there are sites, there's not a lot of them, but there's enough of them that say, we don't want any Windows stuff, we don't want this, we don't want that. And so having, you know, they're, they're running Apple computers to do everything, a lot of applications, and I'll give you an example, Salesforce, which we use, is actually cloud-based. You can run it from any web browser or any PC. So we make sure that those guys don't want to deal with any Windows, their IT department doesn't deal with Windows, that we have an alternative for, okay? So from here on in, the event server is only a Windows thing. There's not a version of this for the, for the, for the Mac, compu the Mac uh, computers. And so we have this thing called the C3 event server, okay? Uh, this can run in Windows 7. This can run on four gigs of RAM because it's really just an advanced displaying of the database, okay, of, of a database collected from all the different DVRs or NVRs uh, you guys may install. So what, uh, what it will do is allow you to remotely configure your systems using a web browser. Uh, Live and graphical server health monitoring. You can receive email notifications or pop-up notifications, uh, view log files, just do all, all kinds of things. And it consists of four parts. You've got your dashboard. You've got your health checker. You've got your report function down over here. And then you've got your live events and event search function. So you can set up a system to where you can monitor all your installs, even your Spectrum installs, and have them go back to this thing, to a PC running on your network, to monitor your installs for you, whether they're, if we're over here, whether they're connected. Why isn't this one connected? I don't know, maybe it's powered off, maybe, you know, the internet's down, you know, there's a whole bunch of reasons to have a, a unit down, but it'll tell you that it's down. And you may know before the, uh, the end user knows it, or, if you have an end user with a lot of sites, this is great because it can monitor the sites and tell them that there's a problem with them before there's a problem. All right. <clears throat> so on the PC itself, you can run between the C3 CMS, which by the way, doesn't have to be installed, and these different dashboards. So I can go up and pull up information on each of these sites. I can, didn't have any live data live events coming in, so I don't have any live stream coming in there, okay? So I can have them all four displayed, or I can create, pop, plug a monitor in, put it on the wall, have a, again, a pretty low-end PC running at Windows 7, four gigs of RAM, i3, dual core, whatever, and have this updated dashboard monitor uh, on there telling me if there's something going on. I could just look up at a glance saying, oh, look, one site's out, okay? So you got to kind of picture in your mind that you've got your all your sites connected, you know, what's going on with them, you know, you've got your monthly chart here, one's disconnected, is there any information in here? Imagine having that up on a monitor, up on a wall for you, head technician, whatever, to look at and see what's going on at some of your customer site or if you have a number of units, you know, 10, 20, 30 units. Uh, uh, up there, you can go in and just view them at a glance. So along with that, you can select the type of event that's displayed. So it doesn't have to be health events. 
We actually have other events you can force the display in. And of course, you can see, drill down and see what's going on with a particular unit, okay? And so for that, we're gonna go over here and this will show us a particular unit, okay? So I call this one VMAX CA2 in our California office. It's a VAP16, the port it's on, it's firmware it's on, uh, temperature, it'll tell me if there's any bad blocks on the drive, stuff like that. If I wanna do a firmware upgrade, maybe I wanna reboot it, maybe I wanna do a factory default, it'll factory default everything but the network uh, information. All right. I can also go in and just look at the events on a particular machine and see if there's a certain time of the day, okay, or just a certain period. There seem to have been more errors than other errors because maybe the error was problem with the power supply leading to the cameras, okay, was wigging out a little bit. So this is all, you can, you can do this all. This doesn't cost anything. It's part of the software. It can be set up by the end user or it can be set up by, um, uh, uh, you know, the dealer themselves to view their A1, A1 pluses, IP plus, uh, but also it requires a little more configuration because Spectrum actually has to push the data to them, but can also have uh, Spectrum do it. A1 plus and IP plus will pretty much do it automatically. So just bear that in mind. All right. So uh, we're going to talk two minutes about DW University. Uh, we've got our online university for right now Spectrum, but we're adding more stuff to it shortly. Okay. Uh, so $129 per person, annual prescription. You get the full access to it for 12 months. Anything new we add, you get access to automatically. Uh, and as part of your member of PIP program, you also get access to the DW's technical support certified dealer uh, queue which uh, speeds up sometimes your uh, calls in for DW Spectrum problems. Uh, we're running the promotion. We were uh, originally gonna run it through the end of April, but because things haven't opened up again, not all businesses can open up again, we're gonna keep the uh, discount code, discount 50, valid until May 31st. Okay, and then we're gonna talk a little bit about the DW uh, website. Uh, as you know, uh, uh, there are uh, things going on uh, with the U.S. government and foreign manufacturers uh, and uh, using federal money for uh, projects, using some manufacturer stuff, maybe for verboten. And so we've gone through all of our products, looked at the bill of materials and everything and make sure they were TAA, GSA compliant. We actually have a link to our website. When you go to the support page, you can just type in NDAA and it'll bring up our compliance list and all the products that are in compliant, which is quite extensive. It's actually 99.9% .9 of our gear, okay? But another thing is you can go to the support website, type in C3. You can say installing C3 CMS on a Mac, adding a site to C3 CMS, upgrading firmware. Uh, you, there's, I think, 25 articles on C3 itself, uh, including how to set up the event dashboard. So this is a very good tool for uh, dealers who just want to get a quick answer, uh, you know, uh, keep this in mind when you're just looking for anything. I mean, just type in a simple search term. Uh, it works great. We update it daily. We are adding stuff daily. Like this one was added May 1st, 2020. So we're adding stuff to this all the time. Uh, so again, we have full online documentation. Uh, it, it, it grows as we find stuff. Uh, also allows you a direct link to create a support ticket with our tech support guys. So by all means, uh, use the website uh, for some help. Now let's talk a little bit about webinars. So we've got C2P webinar coming up. I think it's very important you guys uh, register for this one. Uh, that's at 11 a.m. And on May 12th, we have two, Iron Yoon, which is a very cool uh, video analytic thing you really have to see to believe. And uh, end, of, end of, actually June 2nd, so I was gonna say end of May, June 2nd, we're gonna have a sneak peek at 4.1, so keep that in mind. And now I'm gonna drop to the Q&A. So you guys have a good Thursday. We'll see you on like Friday for the C2P uh, 